hope you had a good weekend. Just want to give a shout out. Thank you um, to my subscribers and everyone who supports my channel. I passed 4,300 subscribers and I am very um, thankful to everyone who supports the channel. So thank you guys very much for the support. Um, if you were on Twitter, you probably noticed that there was a release the air cut trending event or campaign during, uh, during the weekend. And it actually did pretty good as far as engagement tweets and kind of like, you know, pretty much going all day. And today, uh, James Gunn actually kind of, he responded or acknowledged that fans are asking for the air cut of Suicide Squad. He had um, a few tweets that he shared about the topic. He said, opened up Twitter at the end of a long creative weekend to see the many tweets to save Legends of Tomorrow, which I didn't know that that was going on as well, but he acknowledged that and released the air cut and fan support for other DC projects over the years. The majority of these respect uh, requests were, were enthusiastic and respectful. As the new and first ever CEO of DC Studios, Peter and I think it's important we acknowledge you, the fans, and let you know we hear you, we hear your different desires for the pathways for pathways forward for DC. Although our ability to interact on Twitter has been lessened due to the workload of our new positions, we are listening and open to everything as we embark on this journey and we'll continue to do so over the, for the next few years. But our initial focus is on the story going forward, hammering out the new DCU and telling the biggest story ever told across multiple films, television shows and animated projects. We invite all of the DC fandoms from across the multiverse and everyone else as well into this new universe. We can't wait to reveal more. So, um, I mean, I admire the fact that he, you know, at least acknowledged it and was paying attention, showing that they are paying attention to what fans are talking about and advocating for and campaigning for. And again, I've said this before regarding Superman and Dwayne Johnson, no one has ever, no one from the old regime ever acknowledged anything that the fans wanted as far as saying, we're listening to the fans, we are paying attention and we're listening we see what you, the fans are asking for, and we want to deliver on that. They never said that. They begrudgingly <laughs> released the Snyder Cut, um, which I think was more like their hand was kind of forced by AT&T at the time. That's what I think happened. And then they were like immediately after opening weekend, they were like, well, he finished his trilogy and we're going to move forward now. And, you know, we want a more connected thing and whatever. Try to make it seem like they had a plan beyond that, right? Which we know they didn't, but... Well, they did, but it was a terrible one. <laughs> getting rid of the, you know, getting rid of people that we want in the DCU and not, not just want, but need. And so I think it's, um, it's a nice change of pace, especially now that DC has its own studio, DC Studios, its own organ, like it's, its own division under, yes, it's still under WBD, of course, but it's their own thing where they can really focus on DC film, TV, and animation. And I think that's what they have needed all along. It's going to be a better organizational structure and having co-CEOs, you know, having people that kind of have to bounce ideas off of each other, agree, take in different perspectives. And it's a, it's an important thing to acknowledge that we are paying attention to the fans and we're listening. It doesn't mean that fans are going to get every single little thing that we ask for or campaign for or do hashtags for. It doesn't mean that that's going to happen for every single thing that fans want, but at least this, and this was like right after, like the day, you know, right after there was a, a trending event um, for, for the air cut, he acknowledged it right away. Um, and so I think that that is a nice change of pace for the leadership of DC. And I think that it kind of, it's a good way to set the tone moving forward for how they want the relationship to be with fans moving forward, because it's obviously been very damaged from the old leadership. And obviously they want to repair that and show, yes, we realize that the pro one of the main problems was the old regime was very spiteful towards fans and filmmakers and 
cast members. Like they were so spiteful towards so many different people, including the fans, and just were not even showing that they cared what fans wanted or were asking for. And that's not sensical. Like that doesn't make sense. That's not a good business decision. Um, you know, it just doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm glad that he acknowledged this and, you know, kind of not, not speaking for Peter Saffron, but kind of, kind of, you know, saying that he is, he included him in, you know, what he would in his uh, tweets <clears throat> and saying that they are, that they both think it's important to acknowledge the fans and that they're paying attention to what fans are talking about. And um, he obviously has a lot of respect for the fact that David Ayer made his own Suicide Squad movie before him. And there was tweets from a long time ago where he, you know, was very respectful towards David Ayer and his version of the movie and said that whatever, you know, I think a fan had asked James Gunn at I think around the time that his Suicide Squad movie was going to come out, how would he feel if the air cut was ever released? And he was like, I'd be very supportive of whatever, you know, the studio wanted to do with that. And I'm sure he would still be supportive if that's what they decided to do. Definitely a different response to, well, it's a response, first of all, because the, the old regime never, they just wanted to like ignore it and hope that it would just go away if they ignored it. Um, so they never wanted to respond to any of that, except when they would say anonymously or in hit piece article or, you know, negative things, oh, it's never going to happen. It's pipe dream. It doesn't exist. Those are the only ways that they really responded to fans when fans were campaigning for Zack Snyder's Justice League, or when we were calling it the Snyder Cut mostly. So at least this is a response. And I think it's a respectful one. And it's acknowledging the fans. It's not really shooting anything down. While well, at the same time, it's not saying the fans are going to get whatever they want. But it's saying that they are paying attention to what fans um, are talking about. And also acknowledging the fact that they are kind of... Um, you know, that they have an idea of what they, that they have all these, they have ideas of what they want to do moving forward. You know, obviously some things are going to carry over from what we have already, what have already, what has already been established in the DC Cinematic Universe. They're calling it the DCU now, the DC Universe. DCEU was kind of like a fan made term. It was never really official from the studio. And now it's more official that they're calling it the DC Universe. I do feel optimistic about where they're going with DC so far. And of, I mean, needless to say, the most optimistic and like just thing I never thought would happen is the fact that Henry Cavill is back as Superman and he seems very excited about where they're going with that. And I can't wait to find out more. So, you know, um, I'm not a huge fan of James Gunn's personal filmmaking style a lot of the time, but I do, you know, I do give him props for acknowledging the fans and at least releasing something, you know, saying something positive and acknowledging the fans about that. And again, like I said, when he, when he and Peter Saffron were announced in these positions, regardless of his personal filmmaking style, you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't watch the Conjuring movies either and all these horror films and Peter Saffron was the, he, that's all that whole universe is under his belt. And they're like the most successful horror franchise ever. I don't watch those, but I'm not going to be like, oh, well, I don't like those movies. So screw this guy. He's going to be terrible. No, <laughs> they're not in these positions to force their personal style and their personal um, aesthetic onto everyone else. No, that's not the point of them being in this, in this, you know, in this role at DC. So I don't see that happening at all. Um, I see James Gunn being the kind of person to be very open-minded to, you know, a different creative expressions and allowing other filmmakers the same freedom and liberty that he had when he made his DC movie and series already. So it's much better, I'm gonna say this again, it's definitely better than having people in charge who are hateful and spiteful towards Zack Snyder, his fans, the cast members, you know, hateful and spiteful towards anyone who wants other than what they're trying to force on everybody and just 
you know, ruining relationships with directors and people. I mean, Christopher Nolan walked away from them and now he's having lunch with David Zaslav, um, Steven Spielberg, Peter Safran, you know, so <laughs> that's a pretty big deal, you know, and hopefully they're trying to repair these other relationships that were tarnished under the old regime. Henry Cavill did, you know, Ben Affleck, maybe Christopher, possibly Christopher Nolan. So, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. And I think hopefully now there's a more optimistic outlook on those things. So I, I wanted to share that. And uh, thank you guys again for the support on the channel. You can head over and see if there's anything you might have missed recently. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Check out um, the links in the description. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new and if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to leave a thumbs up and turn on notifications so you will be notified when I upload a new video. But thanks, guys. See you soon.